Delivered from distraction, getting the most out of life with attention deficit disorder. By Edward M. Hollowell, MD, and John J. Brady, MD. Boy, whatever you is and wherever you is, don't be what you ain't. Because when you is what you ain't, you isn't. Uncle Remus. Preface to the new edition. Since the publication of this book in hardcover, various issues have come up that Dr. Rady and I would like to discuss here. More than ever, we are convinced of the absolute necessity of a positive, strength-based approach to the diagnosis and treatment of attention deficit disorder. All too often, a mind's chief disability is fear, and fear's cousin shame can also make a menacing, damaging appearance. When the diagnosis of ADD emphasizes first and foremost what is wrong with the person, that person immediately starts to see himself in those negative terms. Shame, fear, and self-doubt grow like the powerful weeds they are, choking out the positive vines and flowers struggling to find their way to sunlight. The traditional medical model emphasizes pathology, what is wrong and sick and in need of remediation. Remediation. Remediation? Remediation. However, when applied to the mind, this approach can do a good deal of damage. The kidney doesn't care if you call it sick, but the mind does. If you tell a person that she has a mental disorder, you create a mental disorder. Not only in the patient, but in those who love her as well. The disorder is fear. Chronic fear holds more people back in life than any other mental infirmity. How ironic and wrong that the helping professions all too often create this problem. The strength-based model, which this book explains in detail, emphasizes first and foremost the search for what is good and strong and healthy in a person. Then, secondarily, what is in need of reme uh, remediation. First, look for the strengths, look for strengths and talents, or potential strengths and talents. Then and only then, take stock of what amiss. What is amiss? This method leads the patient down one of the most important avenues of treatment to the development of mastery. By mastery, I do not mean that a person becomes the best at something, just that he experiences the wonderful feeling of making progress, rather than feeling constant frustration. By tenderly cultivating those tendrils and buds of an interest or talent, a person can blossom and achieve mastery. Then he is on, a, then he is on the way to a better life. Our emphasis on promoting certain life experiences, mastery, interpersonal closeness or connection, practice and discipline, play physical exercise, imaginative engagement with life, the development of a creative outlet, and others, separates what we recommend from the usual intervention that is offered, which is, sad to say, to diagnose and medicate. The comprehensive strength-based plan outlined in this book certainly does not preclude the use of medication. Medication remains a mainstay of treatment. It may not always be necessary, but when used properly, it is safe and effective. Two upsetting reports from the world of medication deserve... Two upsetting reports from the world of medication deserve me mention. Not long after the release of this book in hardcover, Health Canada, the National Health Authority, ordered Adderall XR off the market because in years past a few sudden deaths had been reported in people taking the drug. Naturally, this caused a great scare in both Canada and the United States. The reason the U.S. Federal Drug Administration did not follow Canada's example is that a close inspection of the data revealed that the people who died suddenly were all either in severe physical distress or had underlying cardiac anomalies both of which are risk factors for sudden death regardless of whether or not one is taking Adderall XR. Furthermore, the percentage of sudden deaths among people taking Adderall did not differ significantly from the percentage of sudden deaths in the general population. In the summer of 2005, Health Canada reviewed the data and decided to reverse its prior decision to pull Adderall off the market. Now Adderall XR is available through Health Canada. What is to be learned from the episode even that is not clear, here is what occurred to me. Responsible experts can disagree on scientific topics, 
Lobbyists both for and against medication can influence scientific decisions. Deaths, while dramatic, should not always be blamed on a medication. A person took prior to, to dying. No group or agency, no matter how powerful or exalted, has a lock on the truth. In this information age, the public can expect experts to tell us that something is true one day and that it is false the next. Such shifts do not reflect incompetence or a conspiracy. They reflect the, li- the liability of empiricism. 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 Another report came out of MD Anderson Cancer Center, a highly respected medical institution in Texas, which stated that a series of patients who started on Ritalin experienced chromosomal damage. Chromosomal damage. The study awaits replication with a large sample of patients. However, a close inspection of that study suggests a major flaw. The baseline data, that is, the data gathered before the subjects took Ritalin, showed few or no chromosomal abnormalities. This is extremely suspect. Abnormalities are found in the blood cells of just about everybody. Therefore, the damage experienced after taking Ritalin may have already been there before the subject started on Ritalin. It just had not been noticed in earlier observations. The new medication, Stratera, held great promise a year ago, as it is not a stimulant, is approved for use in adults, is not a controlled substance, is not associated with tics or most of the other side effects of stimulants, and is active throughout the day without peaks and valleys. However, both Dr. Rady and I, and most of the practitioners to whom we have spoken, find it not as effective as hoped. With Stratera, it takes weeks to reach a high enough dose, and the drug often fails to effectively relieve symptoms and carry some burdensome side effects. In September 2005, the Food and Drug Administration issued a warning that suicidal thoughts may be a side effect of taking Stratera. Although this side effect is extremely rare, affecting less than one half of 1% of those in the study, the finding was statistically significant. This should not preclude the use of Stratera, but it does point up the the necessity of close monitoring of any person who takes this medication. We have found Wellbutrin to be a more useful non-stimulant. While medication remains a safe and effective component of the treatment of ADD, the search continues for safe and reliable alternatives. The best of these by far ought not to be considered an alternative at all. The identification and systemic promotion of talents and strengths, also crucial in our exercise, diet, sleep, meditation, or prayer, coaching, restructuring of the environment, finding the right school or job, and finding the right social group or mate. We continue to be impressed with two treatments first mentioned in the hardcover edition of this book. Supplementing the diet with omega-3 fatty acids, as from fish oil, can help not only one's health in general, but the moods and symptoms of ADD in particular. We await further research confirming this finding, but anecdotal evidence suggests it is true. What has also proved helpful to many people who have ADD, as well as people who have dyslexia or problems with coordination, dyspraxia, is physical exercise specifically designed to stimulate the back of the brain or the cerebellum. The method also awaits further research, but anecdotally it was proven useful, although not always and not for everyone. I have recently become more interested in neurofeedback and alternative treatment that has been around for years. I have studied with one of the leaders in the field, Dr. Barry Sturman of UCLA, and have seen the excellent results neurofeedback can produce. The patient hooks up to an electroencephalograph, a machine that records brain waves, and then learns how to modify his own brain waves to induce a state of focus rather than a state of distraction. Many patients have had such good results that I plan to get trained in the technique and offer it as a treatment myself. I will do so. However, with the caveat that one of the leaders in research in ADD, Russell Barkley, mentioned in a recent article, Dr. Barkley warns that as of yet, research does not document the efficacy of neurofeedback as an ADD treatment. If a person wants this form of treatment, he should get it with full awareness that it may not work. It is time-consuming and expensive. 
and its positive results may be transient. Taking those cautions into account, I still want my son to get this treatment. It will not do him any harm, and anecdotal evidence suggests it may help him a great deal. On this, my colleague Dr. Rady and I do not agree. So as you see, when it comes to alternative treatments, there are responsible alternative points of view. As an alternative, 12-step programs are usually not mentioned in association with ADD. They should be. People who have ADD too often use alcohol or drugs as a means of scratching the itch at the core of the syndrome. The fellowship found in Alcoholics Anonymous, for example, fills that need. AA remains one of the greatest self-help programs ever devised. Since so many people who have ADD struggle with issues of addiction, substance abuse, or simply too frequent self-medication, it is worth re-emphasizing how much, a good, how much good a 12-step program can do. The media continues both to help and to hurt that cause, the cause of people getting the help they need, not only with ADD, but with mental health issues in general. Tom Cruise famously lectured Matt Lahr on the dangers of medications and the foolhardy hardiness of psychiatry in general. It is terrible, ter terribly sad to think that some people may not get the help they could, simply because a movie star has scared them away from what psychiatry has to offer. On the other hand, Dr. Phil, who has been doing remarkably good work and getting high ratings, no easy trick, has been advocating a comprehensive and balanced approach to treating ADD, endorsing the use of medication when it is appropriate, but cautioning against diagnosing every rambunctious child with ADD, and recommending that education and counseling be part of the treatment regardless of the diagnosis. He has brought useful knowledge to millions. While I disagree with him on some points, Dr. Phil's general thrust is positive and of tremendous value in helping break down the walls of stigma that have for long separated people from the life-changing help now available. Most of those who are not getting that help with their ADD are adults. Adults with ADD remain the great undiagnosed group. We emphasize adult ADD in this book and hope that if you know someone who might be helped by this diagnosis, you slip her this book or give it to her spouse. Finally, if you are someone picking up this book wanting to learn about this ADD thing for the first time, welcome. You may be embarking on a dramatic journey that will better your life or the life of someone you love. ADD is a good news diagnosis. This diagnosis leads to major turnarounds and improvements. This journey starts with hope, but it ends in reality, in concrete, measurable benefits. Good luck to you as you take this journey. With all warm wishes and high hopes, Edward M. Ned Hallowell, MD, Norfolk, Connecticut, August 2005.